Hello, everybody, and welcome to the SFL podcast. We are in the middle of week one, going into week two here, and we are here with myself, Ryan Karpinski, the assistant director of player personnel for the SFL. And joining me today here is Rob Roby, quarterback, and I believe defensive assistant it was for the London Knights. How you doing, Rob? Doing pretty good, man. How you doing, man? Uh, doing all right. We're, we're recording at a different time, giving that a shot, and we'll see how this goes yeah. for everybody. <laughs> Unfortunately, sunlight outside, man. <laughs> I know. Unfortunately, uh, Ramos uh, can't join man. us here today. Uh, oh. he's at, He had to be at work at the time we're scheduling, so rip to him. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so what I, I got to ask, week one's done. It's come and gone. There were yeah. some upsets. Ooh, oh, gosh, man. It was, it, was a, it was a good week, actually. <laughs> there were some good games, but a lot of them were pretty, pretty well blowouts. Yeah, um, definitely. But, I mean, what, I have to ask this um, because there were some surprises to me. What was the biggest surprise? Like, what game was the biggest surprise to you? Oh, uh, the biggest surprise would have to be that Vancouver game, man. Mm-hmm. I was I was really shocked, man, um, to see those guys to see Vancouver just come out so dominant, you know, earlier on. Yeah, I I, it, I was watching. Um, I can't remember what game I was watching at the same time as theirs was going on, but we had mm-hmm. uh, one of the owners of St. Louis, Dwayne, coming in and kind of telling us the scores, and it was just like yeah. Vancouver's doing what to Atlanta? <laughs> no, it's. Yeah, thirty-eight to seventeen, man. Um, I just I watched uh most of that game, and um, I just I could I couldn't believe it, man. They looked so good, man. Uh, shout out to uh Mickey Martino, man. I was really happy to see him on that first drive, you know, take that touchdown in. I know it's something he had been um you know just looking looking for in his time with uh, Sam Fran and stuff, you know, and um being more a part of the offense. And uh, they they, were, they just looked really great, man. I, yeah, I I was I was shocked. Yeah, they they looked actually they looked solid. I, I went I did go back and watch the game and um also shout out to Andy Hamilton. He, he, the last couple of seasons his run game hasn't really been on point. Uh but yeah. and this game this this week he had 156 yards for Ivan Sanchez. Oh, yeah. Uh oh, almost yeah. 5 yards a carry. So he he had himself a game, two touchdowns. Uh, yeah, that guy was awesome, man. Yeah, he just... he had himself quite the game <laughs> and I mean you brought it up, Mickey Martino. He's got, <clears throat> he had only five catches for fifty-four yards, but he still had those two mm-hmm. touchdowns. And yeah, so, I mean, yeah. that's a solid game for anybody to get those touchdowns. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. If we've had SFL fantasy football, he, I want him on my team. Oh, I know it. Uh, I think uh, Killian is what was Killian out there too? I think. Yeah, and, yeah, um, Brett Killian. Uh, yeah, eleven yeah. catches, one hundred and seventy-four yards. Oh, and a touchdown. yeah, man, that was that was crazy, man. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I think he was one of the uh, the highest guys in the week. Um, yeah, at least top five. I'm, I'm pretty certain, if not number one. I can't remember if there was he was number one or number two. I think. Wow. So, and I mean, more shout outs to Andy. Also, um, I'm not sure if he yes, does the definitely. defense. Also, if if he is, major mm-hmm. shout outs to him. Um, if not, whoever does the shot the defense, major shout outs to them because they were able to force eight interceptions with to Marcus Dunhill, and I, yeah. I don't think that's the highest in a game ever but i think that's up there mm-hmm. probably maybe only like one or two away so yeah yeah i was uh royally pleased that he had eight because i had six and was ver- <laughs> rather embarrassed take, uh, take, the, <laughs> take the take the negative spotlight off of you <laughs> yeah i know it's, uh, <laughs> but yeah um, um that then shout, shout out to andy man he uh, he declared this uh if you remember at the end of the playoffs last year oh he yeah declared that vancouver would come out much stronger he told everybody that you know and um so he it's just nice to see a guy, man, just excited about his team and yeah, talking and, to talk and walking to walk. You know, yeah, what I mean? and, and, and if you're going to look at owners that are excited about their team every time, I mean, it's you're definitely Andy is going to be in that list. He oh, he's yeah, a he's yeah. a constant person in the Discord. He'll defend anybody on his team, and yep. uh, he, he's he's an owner that if you're a team person looking for a good owner on a team, he's definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, Braun, is Chris Braun on that team? I, I believe he is, right? Yeah, Chris Braun is on there now. Um, he got signed yeah. in the off season. Uh, he came out okay. of retirement here uh, okay. from I think it was back in season five or season six when he six when he last played for the DC Dragons. Yeah, I wasn't so, sure if he made any uh, waves at all uh, that game. Uh, uh, let me double check here. I didn't check. I, think, uh, I, I believe I believe most of it was Killian and Martino, but let's see here. Yeah, yeah. It looks nice like he did get at least two catches for thirteen yards. So not a, not a great okay. game for him. Um, he, I mean, yeah, he is yeah. that third string option. 
Um, the big, yeah. the big glaring part of this though is that he did have a, a loss fumble in the game. Ooh, so I mean, the, the big, for it's Chris Brown, it's, it's not that that honeymoon celebration that you want to come into and have that massive yeah. game and you return to the SFL. But um, yeah. it, if you're gonna want to have more chances, you got to be able to hold on that football, big man. Yeah, I know. It. <laughs> well, you know, it's his first game back after being retired, so let's just call it a case of the first weeks. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. So yeah, hope definitely. He'll, uh, come back. Yeah. So, and just to, just to bring it up because I know it's probably a shock to everybody, especially after they're the two time defending champions. You know where I'm going with this? They were undefeated last season. Oh my god! Week gosh. one, first game <laughs> oh, of the season, wow. and that yes. offense looked a little sluggish to me. Um, uh, and that would be the Alaska Storm falling to Baltimore Vultures, twenty three ten. Yeah. Um. I um. Uh. It's so crazy, man. I, I didn't get a chance to see that game. Uh, you know, I'm a huge Cass McFly fan. But um, oh, yeah. when I saw the score pop up on the alerts or, or whatever it was, when the guys were, you know, chatting about it, I um I thought that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, well, well, your your boy, yeah. Cass McFly, he did, he did go out there. He only had three tackles, but he had himself a, okay. uh, an interception for 25 yards. So he got him. He, okay. he was one of those three. Um, they got three interceptions, okay. uh, Cass McFly, Hendrick Thornberry, and Tony Willis. And okay. uh, they were able to take advantage of what the, the old man they call Riverboat Ron because he likes to gamble and everything. He'll throw those risky yeah. passes, and sometimes it just doesn't yeah. work out for you. Um, yeah. So what do you think happened in that game, man? I mean, I'm I'm just I'm shocked. Ten points, um, you know. Honestly, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent certain. I mean, Alaska has never really been like the greatest of running team, but they've had a really really good situational running. Um, yeah. But they only got a total of twenty yards rushing in this game. Um, oh, wow. And part of it, part of the problem there is they ha- they were beaten time of possession by about seven minutes. Actually, over se- over seven minutes, about seven minutes and forty five uh. seconds. Um, okay. so it, I think part of it was that the, uh, the Baltimore vultures were able to just convert on third down and the Alaska storm weren't. And I mean, the vultures converted okay. eight of 14 for 57% on third down. Uh, Alaska only converted four of 11 for 36%. So, I mean, the defense for Baltimore was able to keep, get those in turnovers and then also take the, when they got to third down majority of the time, they, they got off the field and. Unfortunately, Alaska's defense just couldn't do that. Do that, so they just kind of got worn down. It seems, sounds like. Yeah, yeah, maybe a lot of dink and dunk. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's ball, that's what know? I'm thinking. Um, mm-hmm. I, I remember watching the game, and I'm having a hard time remembering the exact the exact kind of like game plan that was going on. Um, mm-hmm. but I mean, they also had uh, uh, the running game for the for Baltimore was going pretty solid. I mean, they they themselves had 158 total rushing yards. Um, wow. With uh, T. Roy Gaines back there. And he averaged yeah. over five yards of carry over there, too. So it was 32 carries That's a big for 163 boy, man. <laughs> yards. Uh, unfortunately, with that total, he didn't quite get himself into the end zone. But I mean, he definitely set his team up really well. Um, yeah, and he just yeah. basically seemed to have his way with that defense, averaging over five yards of carry. Yeah. Well, I expect uh, I expect Mighty and Company, man, to, to bounce back from that, man. That, that, uh, I'm I'm not gonna say uh, Baltimore doesn't deserve the win, you know, but I just for I was, sure, I was for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, man. I mean, <laughs> you don't you don't get to be a two time defending champion for just by luck. I mean, you know what you're right, doing, right. and I, I fully expect Mighty. He had the bye, he has the bye week this week, um, mm-hmm. so he'll be, probably be able to tinker a little bit more with his playbook. Um, yeah, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens when he comes back in week three. Um, let's see who they play real quick. They, they're going up against the Tallahassee Pride, so it's going to be a rematch of the oh, last two man. championship games, uh, Alaska versus yeah. Tallahassee. Um, that game is going to look like it's going to be on Friday uh, at okay. 7 p.m. Central um, on the 18th. So not this week, but next week. So make sure you guys circle that one on your calendar, and let's see who comes yeah. out on top that time. Okay, okay, nice. <laughs> so um, as far as other surprises, um the Dallas Lobos and the St. Louis Gladiators game. Oh yeah, that was um, a great that, game. Was, that was actually a real that was a really good game. Um, it was a high scoring game, twenty nine to thirty five, mm-hmm. with St. Louis being able to pull it out. Yep. Um, both those teams look nothing like they looked last season. Honestly, nothing um, at they, all. <laughs> their offenses kind of went crazy. I mean, right. uh, I agree. Uh, Jacques Jacques Luyendula he threw for four, over four hundred yards. 
Uh, yeah. Denzel Diaz yeah. rushed for over a hundred. He also had, I think he had himself three rushing touchdowns. Yeah, he was he was amazing, man. Those those rushing touchdowns. I um I, I've been a, an advocate for him since last uh preseason, man. I've been I was hoping they were able to get him running last year, but uh it just kind of fell short, man. But he he really impressed uh in that game. I was I was I was jumping on my couch, man, like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he yeah. so he had two rushing touchdowns and a catching and a receiving touchdown. Um, but I mean, mm-hmm. talk about having your way with the defense and I mean I know Crash Combs. He knows he knows mostly what he's doing over there, so I, yep, I expect true. the defense to shore up. But Denzel Diaz, they 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 have the nickname Mighty Mouse for he's a, he's a little bit of a shorter guy, but he will, he will break those yep. tackles and he showed that on a couple of those runs. Like he had like forty yard run that he broke through like three tackles. Um, but yep. having your way with that defense, he only ran the ball thirteen times, but he racked up one hundred and fifteen yards. Yep. So no, eight point eight man. yards is just crazy. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, I was I was really just as, as astonished at uh, Moody Moody Mitchell, man, and his his composure. You know, you know, his first year, and you know, he's back behind gun behind center, and he 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 just looked really really great, man. You know, he was uh twenty one of uh, look what was twenty one attempts, I believe. Of, yeah, um, twenty one completions, uh, uh thirty nine attempts. Yeah, yeah thirty nine attempts. Yeah, and he had about three three sixty in yardage and yep. three passing touchdowns, man. No interceptions, man. That's that's the big that's one. That's the big stat. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's the big one. And what what makes it even more crazy is neither team had an interception. Um, I yeah, believe I believe yeah. both I believe the game was completely turnover free. So I mean it was mm-hmm. it was a really clean game. It was just offenses doing their thing, defenses just trying to hold on. Um yep. and I do I do have to, I do have to shout out the Dallas defense and Moody Mitchell at the same time. Um Moody Mitchell mm-hmm. because he did absorb six sacks. But he still stood mm-hmm. in there like a big man. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, Jukin Rukin, the the uh, oh, he was phenomenal too. He man. he had a lot of quarterback <laughs> pressures. Um, his yeah. stats don't really a hundred percent reflect exactly all that he did um, because oh, yeah. he had a lot of hurries. He hit the court. He hit Moody Mitchell several times as he was throwing the ball to cons in completions. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was. If you watch the game, you'll see that he was in. You know, you could just see his jersey everywhere around the quarterback. Yep, he was <laughs> he was almost yeah. constantly there. It was it was almost a constant thing. So yep. I mean, big big shout outs to him and the work he's he's put in since he got drafted by Dallas. Um, most definitely, man. So Dallas just looked really good in that run game, man. I just I, I was just really shocked that they had such a a balanced attack, you know. Yep. Um, as opposed to last year when it was just an air raid, you know. Um, yeah, but, they did, uh, they definitely yeah. had some more carries than they did last season. I mean, in this game they had fourteen carries. I mean that's yep. that's about the amount they had usually through three games last season, right? <laughs> so, but they got they they drafted yeah. themselves a really big back in Zach Sandlin. Um, yeah. For those of you that know the SF the NFL, he he's kind of more it's what if, if I remember what they were saying. He to them he looked a lot like uh, Jerome Bettis out there, the bu- oh, the yeah, bus just running through, just yep. trying to run through people and big man yeah. get out the way. Yeah, well, his draft stock was what he was a third or. Um, number two, I, I believe. What he was. I believe he was either two or three. I think you're right. I two or three. Say, yeah. I, I know he was an early draft pick for them. Yeah, um, yeah. that was a good so. pickup by them. Yeah. And it, for one more surprise game to me, real quick here. Okay. The Mexico City's Aztecs putting up 49, oh. 49 points. Yeah, that was. Uh, and not, not say, against a yeah, slouch team, Carolina. No. Carolina had a really good I, yeah. defense last season, and they also had a yeah. really good offense last season. But in this in this game, the offense for Carolina only actually put up seven points. Fourteen of those points were put up because of pick sixes yeah. by their defense. Yeah. So yep. it was just, it was a little crazy to me. I mean, yeah. Mexico City. You no, know, they had they had a similar yeah. formula to Baltimore over Alaska. Honestly, they converted when they got a third down. They converted it. It was they were seventy yeah. percent seven for ten. It's just ridiculous, man. I, I I was shocked. I I didn't think Mexico would put up that many points. Um, I don't even think I've I've watched a game where they put up that many points. I, yeah. But when I <laughs> when I when I saw the game starting, it was like twenty one to zero or something. I was like, oh oh, oh boy, it's over. It's yeah. gonna be a slow game. And then Carolina actually sparked a little bit of a comeback man they got some big plays by uh johnny savage uh and the rest of the crew and uh they wound up it, w- it was actually 21 to 14 i believe uh midway through the second quarter and yeah. then 
then Mexico City just unloaded. I don't know what uh, Ray Bentley was uh, feeding everybody or, or whatever, distributing on the sideline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout the, out to uh, him, man. Yeah, that's yeah, the Skyhawks. But, they they were down twenty one nothing, and that that defense. I mean, a lot of yeah. times you'll see a team just kind of give up after then. Like it was, yeah. it was looking like a blowout, but. That yeah. defense, they went off. Um, they're yeah. one of their star players, Jack Burton. He had a fifty-three yard in, interception return for a touchdown. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not. Sure, I don't know who the other person was. It was a non-contract player. Um, yeah. But I mean, having both of them being able to do pick sixes and actually come back, put that team right back mm-hmm. in position at twenty-one fourteen. I mean, that is that mm-hmm. is one hell of an accomplishment there. So I mean, shout outs to them. Um, and I know Johnny took this loss a little bit, a little. He, he took it a little hard. Um, I, th- I know he's been putting the work in this week. I would really love to see him come out here and his defense just shut down yeah. an offense and then also put up points again because, I mean, that's that's nothing but a, yeah. a booster right there. Yeah. Um, I think um, uh, something that the announcers were saying as well is it, it just shows you uh, that they have a young team, you know, mm-hmm. and they have a totally new new regime going on. Yeah, they, so, they um, had a lot of turnover this offseason. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so uh, I, th- I think what – I think the takeaway for Savage is that, you know, you were in, within seven points uh, of Mexico City. This is a playoff caliber team. You were within seven points in the first half. Um, there was something that his defense did in the second quarter, which allowed them to to get the breaks. But yep. then something, you know, other parts of the playbook kicked in, you know, and it just became a nightmare. But um, what 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 I saw was a team down 21-0 that actually put up 14 points on a playoff, a playoff team, yep. you know. Uh, and so I think, um, you know, he doesn't want to get down on himself and be too hard on himself. You know, it's his first, his first game, you know, uh, scheming. So, um, you know, just, just, you know, keep your head up and, and keep working with what, with what's working, you know, and, and study, study your team, you know, and, and come back next week and, you know, see if you, if the, if the cards are in your favor, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? for sure. I mean, next week, yeah. the, the best thing to do is go back and look at that game film from when your defense all of a sudden turned it on, turned, just turned it on and shut them out. Um, yeah, for the true. next like quarter and a half, basically, um, right. And I th- I do think part of the issue for Carolina this game was the offense just couldn't seem to keep to get going. Um, Mexico right. City defense they they've always been really good, but I mean they really shut down that Carolina offense. Um, they the Carolina offense only had a total of two hundred and seven yards, um, oh, and that's yeah. one hundred ninety pa- one hundred ninety yards passing and seventeen yards rushing. Um, yeah, and then one yeah. touchdown, and I think it was actually like a long touchdown play that kind of mm-hmm. kind of saved it there. Um, and it, yeah. actually, it doesn't look like it was too long, about 26 yards it looks like um, for a touchdown. So it wasn't like terribly long, but just the, the offense couldn't get going, especially with their their draft pick, uh, Randy Mercury, back there in the backfield. They gave, oh, yeah. they gave him 12 yeah, carries and only 17 yards. I mean, the, blo- the blocking wasn't quite there. It just seemed like yeah. Mexico City was just constantly in the backfield. And it was just they were they were harassing Mark Biddick's all day. They only got two sacks to him. Um, but, I mean, yeah. they got all those tackles in the backfield and short gains for Randy Mercury. And the, mm-hmm. Mexico City, they're, they're definitely one of my favorite teams to watch, mostly because they're defense. But this week it was a, it was a combination of their offense and defense. Um Yep. I don't think I've ever seen Matt Wilson. I can't say ever seen. I don't think I've seen Matt Wilson throw for mm-hmm. over 300 yards, except for yeah. this game in like the last two seasons. I agree. I agree. It's and, more of a um, you know, run, 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 balance. You know, pass yeah. balance game. Yeah, know? exactly. And they, I mean, they still had yep. that. I mean, and so <clears throat> he only completed. He only attempted 36 passes. I say only 36 passes. So he attempted 36 passes. And then mm-hmm. they also ran the ball 24 times. So, I mean, it was a pretty good balance. Um, right. It's about the balance you would expect from a team. Um, but mm-hmm. Wilson was just super efficient with the with the field that his defense gave him. He 349 yards, but he also threw five touchdowns. He did yeah. have the two interceptions that ended up in pick sixes. So, I mean, technically, <laughs> he threw seven touchdowns in the game. But, I mean... <laughs> yeah, they're looking like Brady. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it, it was it was a great game for Mexico City, rough game for Carolina. Um, I expect mm-hmm. the owner for Carolina, James Klein, to kind of help out help out their new guys. They know they have a new offensive coordinator and a new coordinator and a new defensive coordinator, and Johnny Savage for defense and yeah. uh, LB Allen for the offense. And I'm sure he's yeah. going to kind of help them also look at their playbooks and be like, throw out some su- suggestions. Be like, hey, this but this actually play would probably work really well. Um, mm-hmm. 
help them watch break down film and everything. So I, I fully expect yeah. them to be able to bounce back here um, yeah, within, within, a, within a week or two. So, yeah, takes time. That's all. <laughs> exactly. It, it just takes time. Yeah. So uh-huh. and then for just kind of moving on from games here. Um, sorry if we didn't get to you guys. We're, we're not trying to do every single game. We're just kind of yeah, doing stuff yeah. that pops up to us here. Yep. We're, we, we, uh, we posted it out on, twi- on uh, Twitter and Instagram and all that for the top five players. If you haven't seen, um, you can look on the website at simulationfl.net. Um, we'll just break down a couple of the, the, the surprising ones here in the top five and a couple of things here, at least at least for me, a couple of surprising ones. Um, Jacques-Louis Dula is not terribly surprising for me. Um, okay. Dallas is, a more of a pa- is a definitely more of a pass-happy team. Um, 413 yards. It's about what I was expecting. Um, mm-hmm. But looking at it, Julian Tyree over in Sioux Falls has th- had over 300 yards. Um, and he, that puts him right at number four. And nice. From what, from what I remember about Sioux Falls, they were more of a kind of like running team that did the more of the little out routes and check downs to their, to their running back, Colin Hart. Um, mm-hmm. So him having over 300 yards is, is actually a bit of a surprise to me. And the thing is, is he also, he didn't just settle for short passes. He actually averaged the longest yards per attempt by almost a full yard uh, in the SFL yeah. in week one. So it wasn't really like dinking and dunking. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't really dinking and dunking. Yeah. He, he went, he went for those first downs on almost every throw. Um, mm-hmm. And so he really went off on it. Um, Do you have the link to those? Uh, um, trying to look at those charts again. I'm sitting here trying to fumble and find them. Apologize for that. <laughs> That's all right. I got you there. Yeah. So and then looking and then looking at uh, at rushing real fast, we got uh, Jared Willis up there for Chicago. I don't know. I don't honestly don't know the last time I saw a Chicago running back top top of the leaderboard there for rushing yards. Uh, at 170 oh. yards, um, and then definitely for sure, Ivan Sanchez over in Vancouver. Uh, yeah, he's two phenomenal. two seasons ago, <laughs> yeah, he did amazing. Uh, two <laughs> seasons ago, or was it no, 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 last season I believe last it was. Uh, he they had Cody Hill over there, and Ivan Sanchez was was I think lead blocking for him at fullback, and Cody Hill was the running back, and they just couldn't mm-hmm. seem to get him going. Um, it just it didn't matter what they did. He just he just couldn't get open field or anything. And this mm-hmm. season, at least the first game, it was a completely different story. I mean, yeah, yeah, 156 yards. I mean, we we brought it up earlier. That's that's a hell of a thing. three carries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell of a thing. Um, yeah. Another one to me they, would be Reggie Streeter over in London. Oh uh, yeah, Reggie Streeter. <laughs> he, he has that's a street tar. Street tar, he, not. <laughs> <laughs> he had himself a pretty nice game, twenty five yards or twenty five carry for one hundred nineteen yards. Um, yeah, and that's for that's coming over from London, who I believe in the last either last season or the season before actually ran uh, no no con, a non contract running back. Mm-hmm. Um, so oh. I mean, this definitely shows that if they have a star back there, they do know how to use them. Um, at yep. least in the first, at least this first week does. Um, and Super not only that, yards too, man. yeah, I was just going to say, and not yeah. only that, he had some, he had some pretty good, uh, receiving yards there, six catches, 67 yards for 11 car- yards oh, yeah. of carry. Um, yeah. I think that puts him about second, uh, for yards per reception, um, mm-hmm. behind Logan Jack over in new Orleans, who also had six catches, but he had 88 yards. Yeah. 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 He was my safety valve this over the weekend last week. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I was like, with the Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> Registrita. Yeah. Streeta. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I think uh, Liam says it's Streeta. <laughs> Streeta. Uh, well, it works. We don't, you guys are in London after all. May as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then here's one. I'm uh, moving over to the receiving. Um, one of the surprising ones to me, Matt Burnham. He leads, oh. the, he leads the league in, in, in uh, receptions, uh, receiving yards. Sorry. 13 wait, wait, catches. Wait, wait, wait. Well, one second. One. Feel the burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah, uh, see. 13 catches for 180 yards. Um, this is actually a player who he did the Optimus Klein. Um, he moved from mm-hmm. tight end to wide receiver. And week mm-hmm. one, he is the leader of receiving yards. Man, and I'm telling you, man, this is just a personal account, man. I was there in San Fran. And I'm a shout out to Gabriel. I love him to death. And shout out to Mickey. 
I was telling those guys, yo, give Burnham the ball, man. <laughs> give Burnham the ball, man. I'm I'm just so happy to see him at the top of that leaderboard, you know, this week. That was a big game, even, even though, you know, it came against me of all people. But yeah, you know. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm really, really, really happy that he just exploded like that, man. That's definitely a good look for him, you know, out in San Fran. And not to be left behind here, we do have a couple tight ends, actually. It looks like the top 10, top 15, um, mm-hmm. which they're normally not really super high receiving yards in this league. Um, but we got I, so I definitely want to give them a shout out, uh, especially these two, because they actually had amazing uh, yards per reception this week. And that would be uh, Cody Scott over in, in St. Louis. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah and Tristan yeah. Carr over in Dallas. Uh, Cody Scott had five catches for 134 yards. Yeah, that's uh, true. That's, that's twenty six over almost twenty seven yards a catch, and then just to not be outdone and just be like, you know what? What anything you could do, I can do a little bit better here. Tristan yeah. Carr got himself four catches for one hundred seventeen yards, and he's like, yeah. here, I I see your twenty six, twenty seven yards of reception, <laughs> trying to match my twenty nine here, yeah. buddy. And and I see they like to call him Trash Carr, man, but I guess that's because you can smell him because well, <laughs> with the, with, the, with those with those reception yards, man, woof. Oh. He had a big day, two touchdowns, you know. <laughs> yeah, two touchdowns for and for Cody. He wasn't able to get in there, but I mean, he definitely set himself up, set his team up uh, with those big catches. I mean, tw- averaging twenty six yep. yards and twenty nine yards a catch. That's that's nothing to scoff at at all. Um, yeah, very true. And then one more shout out there because he, it's another tight end that got over a hundred yards. Tiberius mm-hmm. Bovine over in OKC. OKC, yeah, okay. And so I see him. He only had three catches for 102, but guess what? Tristan, I'm sorry you got to fall down to second here because that's over <laughs> 30 yards. That is 34 yards a catch. I know. He's like, yo, just go deep to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's uh, almost good for at least one highlight play a game, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. He actually, uh, he, he's at least once a game, he's down, streaking down the middle of the field. And he'll he'll lay out for a pass almost at least once a game, and he will get it. Yeah, it happens every week. I don't understand it. I don't know what it is. And Demond, it happens to be the call. It feels like every single time, because <laughs> he every time I hear is I just saw a man fly. I can't yeah. get excited. I, I don't get all excited like he does. I mean, he yeah. really he really delivers. But I mean, he. Yeah. It, I just don't understand it, man. Like I feel like he actually can fly. He. He looks like he dives like five, six yards after this ball. Oh man, he needs to have his own um his own logo, like how they have the Jordan sign. Just have a diving <laughs> a diving sign with Tiberius just reaching out. <laughs> you know? I mean, unfortunately, uh, yeah. as I, I, the first thing I think of is take a cow and make it dive, like jumping over the moon, and just call bovines. <laughs> a bovine. <laughs> oh man, bovines finest. <laughs> so it's nice, man. moving moving over to defense here. Um, if there's any more players you you kind of have a look at and you and you want to shout out, I mean, let me know here. Okay, um, yeah, you're doing pretty good. Yeah. But uh, defensive tackles, we got them sort, sorted by defensive tackle, defensive end, and linebackers, cornerbacks, okay. all that. So they're all sorted this season on the on this web the web page. And so if you guys get the chance, you can check yeah. out and see how you uh, stack up and stack up against your uh, your position group here. Mm-hmm. Um, we already mentioned uh, Rukin. Uh, we did. We did mention Juke. He was Rukin. all over the place. He was yeah. all over the place. His stats didn't really quite uh, sh- reflect what he did in that game, and honestly, and and if yeah. if it if it came down to it, and Dallas ended up winning that game, I honestly possibly would have given the ball game ball to Juke and Rukin, um, yeah. just because he was he affected so many plays. Yeah. Just um, to just to add, man, um, this is going to be kind of unique, uh, but uh, I, I want to give a game ball to the entire San Francisco defense. Uh, because they they really really uh showed off man this week this past week you know oh yeah and um uh and and, and definitely went to the, to the rookie Justin Jones man for getting the, for getting the game sealer <laughs> you know what I mean and, yeah. it's always a good feeling yeah. for a rookie especially yeah 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 so so but yeah this um leaderboard looks pretty good here mm-hmm. uh so yeah, yeah we got we got a couple guys up here um we got a couple people returning from the last few seasons up in the top five for defensive tackles. You got Mike Johnson, mm-hmm. um, used to be part of the Tallahassee Pride. He's over in Las Vegas. Um, six tackles for a defensive tackle, three of them sacks, and uh, four tackles for loss. So besides the three sacks, he also got one tackle in the backfield on a running back, and uh, he he was he was a he was a force. 
I mean, a defensive tackle getting an actual six sacks and not all of them or six tackles and not actually being all of them sacks is pretty huge. Yeah. Um, and then you got a, a rookie here, Denzel Maverick from over in Dallas, had himself four tackles also, uh, mm-hmm. two of them for tackle for loss. One of those tackles for loss was a sack, so he also was getting mm-hmm. in that run, getting in that backfield. And the Dallas defensive line is looking really good actually this first two this first week here. Um, they're yep. getting in the backfield. They're getting those stops. They're rushing that quarterback. They're mm-hmm. they're going to put some pressure on some people, and I'm I'm curious to see how well people are going to keep responding to this. Right. Um, I see uh, you got your boy uh, Easy Timble up under here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and Indy looks pretty good too, man. Yeah, That's a lot a of people. A lot of people <laughs> might remember him as one of like I think it was like a seven sack game last season. Yeah, um, yeah. one of the one of the highest sack totals in a game. Uh, and then my my alma mater. Uh, oh the yeah, the Houston hyenas, or is it might have said the <laughs> hyenas? Hyenas. <laughs> we got Chad Tackle, oh, man. big man back there. He's he he keeps talking about he's not getting off the ball as fast as he used to be. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what he's talking about because I mean, four tackles, one of <laughs> uh, three of them for loss, and only one tackle. One tackle is a, one of those was a sack. So he's yeah. he actually was back there causing some mayhem in that running game basically oh, so yeah. he's always always a disturbance with him man on the d-line oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they like to call him big freaky big i remember freaky. that i remember that big freaky <laughs> big freaky <laughs> so move, man, moving over man. to the defensive end here i mean honestly defensive end any any position group that has an alaska power player it seems like they're gonna have oh my god on the Nine defensive times. line that is they're gonna have one of their guys on top Yep, now, I however, see. it may it may not who you're expecting it is. This yeah. time, it's not Alex Dominguez. It's not Big Sexy. Nah, it is Kevin nah. Bain. Nine <laughs> nine tackles. I don't, that's just crazy. Yeah. Nine tackles, four sacks, four yeah. tackles for loss. So all the sacks there, but that just means that he was able to get off the ball, get outside the tackles, and be able to stop those outside runs, or he was able to go inside and actually stop those runs for about a yard or two. Now, yeah. he didn't leave Alex Dominguez too far in the dust, that is. So he he's, he himself still had seven tackles. But he did only have the one sack. So, I mean, he the both of them had f- respectively five and six tackles that were not sacks, which is really, really mm-hmm. good for defensive linemen. Um, just making sure they were getting all over the place and making plays. Um, unfortunately, just like I said, the offense for Alaska just didn't seem to quite get, get clicking. Yeah. Um, that's 16 tackles between the two of those guys, man. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> wow. now that's just tackles. Now here is the man of the week. Uh. <laughs> Gib Lidu. Tulsa yeah. Desperados. Seven tackles. Six and a half of those were sacks. Man, look at that. It, that, 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 that that's have, havoc, man. Have Jeez. yourself a game, young man. I mean, was you, anybody blocking? I, honestly, I don't even know. I mean, th- that's just Man. crazy. Six and a half sacks. Uh, you come in, you come in, and you just you start wrecking house like that. People are gonna start double, triple teaming you. What yeah, that means though ridiculous. is the rest of your team is gonna have field day. So he's got his buddy Rhett Sawyer over there, um, who shared mm-hmm. that other half sack with him. So he's got that half sack over there um, at yeah. defensive tackle. But mm-hmm. he's. He, they start double teaming over there on uh, Ghibli Do, and th- it's, he'll start having a field day over there with Brett Sawyer. Yeah, that's um, a good, a good, a good day right there, man. I didn't yeah, realize he had six sacks. That's a as, as they as they say, that's a good day at the office. I know it. <laughs> so, oh, man. moving on to linebackers here, real quick, we got uh, two plot. <laughs> <laughs> we we got we got some good guys up here. We got we got a couple of returning players basically and everything so we got chad guy who's over there in san francisco 18 yep. tackles 12 of them solo six assisted and only one of those for loss so he was up there in the middle mm-hmm. or on the outside just stopping those runs as they were kind of getting yep. to there and yep. the, i mean he put him to work <laughs> yeah they, they, he put in the work they put him to work he i mean whew, damn man yeah that's a lot of tackles <laughs> And then uh, you got Alex Parker over there at Sioux Falls, 15 uh-huh. total tackles, nine mm-hmm. of those solo. Uh, Echo Love over in Denver, who I believe actually did just get replaced by another player. Um, okay. Let me see if I can find the, find the name here. Already? 
Yeah, he he got replaced by uh, Mike okay. Sawchuk. Okay. So Mike, you you got you got some work to do here. Echo Love in his one game put up thirteen points, um, <laughs> or thirteen points, thirteen tackles, and nine of them solo, two of them for tackles for loss, and he also defended a pass. So you mm. you got your work cut out for you over there, big man. Um, yeah. And Echo, the for, for those curious, <laughs> um, Echo Love was the owner Jeremy Vega's owner player, so he was able to be replaced at any time. Okay. Um, nice. And so that's what ha- kind of happened here. We had a, n- a new rookie come in, and uh, the owners have the ability to be able to bank- basically re- relinquish their spot to a newer player. Um, ah, I see. I see. And so it gives every because I mean they they own the team and everything, so it's not like they one hundred percent need the spot. It's an it's kind of a perk where they can have it. Um, okay, that makes sense. And so. Allowing allowing newer players to come in and be able to take the spot if they want to uh, uh, relinquish it to them, I, I believe it's I a see. it's a nice thing to be able to let players get in and just immediately get to work here. Um, so that wasn't a, um, a misprogression thing or anything. That was just no. It was it was it was just player. he's going to step aside and let someone else come in here basically. Um, okay. And then you have a Quanta Shine over Atlanta, who every season seems to be in the top three <laughs> or four of tackles it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if he could be like 10th mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden he'll have a 21 tackle game like last season it's like what okay yeah. now he's back up top again guys hello <laughs> so he, yeah he set a record yeah. last season 21 tackles. solo tackles mm-hmm. yeah 13 tackles this week 11 of them solo so i mean mm-hmm. the the man is just everywhere and the thing is is when you run into him he ain't letting go <laughs> he's, he's he's i mean he's got a hold of you you're going down i mean that's basically what yeah. it comes down to so uh-huh. yeah yeah a lot of big names here man so you yeah. got prasad here fargo yeah and, um a couple a couple of new guys in there zachary bates john gregory yeah yeah champions here got nine tackles jack brown doing what jack brown does shout out yeah. to him i so shout out to jack brown here he, i I know he's made his personal mission this week, this season actually, not even week, mm-hmm. to beat Slim Shady in tackles. Because, oh, did he? Yes, oh, because no, last no. because <laughs> last season, Slim Shady he was beating him for most of the season, and then Slim Shady came from behind and ended up I think either tying him or take overtaking him towards the end of the season. I see. I see. And they were they were in a battle for pretty much the top tack the top tackles in the league last season. Yeah. So I remember the runner up jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and then you do have a couple people that move positions. Um, Abner St. John over in Las Vegas. He was, mm-hmm. I want to say he was with uh, either San Francisco or Vancouver. I can't remember yeah. which one it was. San Fran. San, it, was, it was San Fran. I think he played defensive tackle mm-hmm. actually, um, originally. Yeah. But so he put up eight tackles there um, over in Las yeah. Vegas this yeah. week. Um, mm-hmm. So I mean that's a that's a pretty good game for a man that used to be playing over there defensive yeah. tackle. He kind of was underutilized at defensive tackle too, you know. So it's yeah. um, good that he's you know get to be in a linebacker core now. Oh yeah, you know, getting in some action. So, so, yeah. And then we'll move on here to the position I used to play, uh, and that'd, that'd be cornerback. Okay. For those of you that didn't know, I used to have I used to be a player here um, under the name Ryan Michaels. Um, I played for the Houston Hyenas, <laughs> and uh, this. It, the biggest thing here is you just got to, you can't let your man go past you. Um, you can have those pass defense, you have those interceptions. And the thing with, with the cornerback's position is if you don't, if you don't have the stats, it usually means it's because you're doing your job. It means they're not even throwing to you. And then That's if true. you have those interceptions, you're doing your job even better because when they are throwing it to you, you're taking it away. Yeah. Yep. So what I like to focus here on cornerbacks not so much tackles. I mean, those those are great too. I mean, I won't I won't definitely scoff at Drew really over there in St. Louis having eleven tackles, um, mm-hmm. in this one week. Um, that's definitely a, a good game. Uh, but yep. not only that, uh, you have him with four pass defenses. So I mean, he was knocking the ball out of the air, uh, which definitely a good thing to be able to do. I mean, cornerback. Yep. Everyone likes to make the joke. The reason they play defense is because they can't catch. <laughs> well, you see, sometimes cornerbacks have more interceptions than players on the offense had catches. That's, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. So with Dante West out there, three, there you, yeah, three there you go, Dante West, three interceptions. <laughs> uh, Christopher yeah. Dodd over there in uh, in London with you over there, getting two of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Camden Hoffman over in Carolina. Carolina, wow. San, I, I saw the sea, yeah. and that's not right. <laughs> San Francisco Sharks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that one might feel a little, sting a little. He had he had an interception yeah. there. and um, the pick six. He, oh, he, he, gave you, he, he gave you a touchdown, I guess. So, I mean. I spilled my Coke on that pick six, man. I said, <laughs> no! <laughs> so, and then you got uh, Everett Garrison over in Houston. He's got one. Uh, Kyler Murray's got one. Hendrick Thornberry's got one. Yeah, uh, we had we actually had quite a few interceptions there um, this season mm-hmm. in the first week of the season. A um, couple of the guys had those pick sixes. I think we had like three of them this season so far this season. Yeah, Camden Hoffman, mm-hmm. uh, Matthew Lee over in Denver, and Jack Burton. They each had one interception. Well, they also mm-hmm. each had one touchdown. Yeah. Now, um, I uh, this 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 Thomasina Thomasina Ramen mm-hmm. uh, is that a cornerback? Or uh, safety. Let's see here. Thomas Cena Raman. I believe well Thomas Raman Jr. I know is a cornerback. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember. Cause I remember seeing that name. Uh, that's a safety, as a matter yeah, of fact. Yeah, I, I say Thomas Cena, I believe, was either a free safety or strong safety, as I think oh, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, but yeah, remember, Thomas uh, Thomas Raman Jr., uh okay. son of quarterback for Oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank on the, the team. I believe I believe it's Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think all is of them. Is it Las Vegas? Ramen? Yeah, Ramen's Las Vegas. What am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, Ramen's Las Vegas. I was, I was trying to think. I was like, New yeah. Orleans? No, that's Xander. No. So, but yeah, no, so we got Thomas Thomas Ramen Jr. playing cornerback yeah, over yeah. there, um, playing over on, yeah. on Las Vegas there with him. Um, over there with Merrick Itera, who. Merrick Artera is another one that I'm surprised he didn't have an interception um, this week. He, mm-hmm. he, he almost every season he's up there in the top top five of interceptions yeah. and for corner for defense overall, um, which as a cornerback mm-hmm. is definitely a, a, a good thing. Um, it seems that he a lot of this. Yeah, he, no, he, oh, yeah, he, he, he's he's got nine tackles at least, so he he was able to get bring down the tackles. Um, mm-hmm. but you normally see a lot of the interceptions go to like safeties, um, right. a couple, a couple of them to linebackers, but mo- majority of them go to safeties and cornerbacks more are just kind of past mm-hmm. defenses and, ta- and they get their interceptions every once in a while. But like I said, I feel that if, if you're doing your job and you're doing your job really well, you're not going to have the stats because they're not even thrown to you. Correct. Correct. So, yeah. um, so that's definitely something that's to definitely. keep an eye on. Um, like we said, your boy, your boy Kaz McFly over there, three tackles, uh, interception yeah. over there as well. Um, yeah. Good. That's looking good. at Pat Ke- Pat Ketza over there, he's got a pass mm-hmm. defense, five tack and three tackles in Atlanta. Uh, so it, we we got some different some different some new blood. Let's put it that way, showing yep. up and and showing up in a big way. Yep. So we'll Very have true. to we'll have to see what, how this continues on in the season. Um, can't really forget about. We already brought him up, Dante West. He, oh yeah. He had three interceptions. He only had four yards on him, so he he kept, he caught them right in the face of those receivers. Mm-hmm. Um. So, but he also uh, got himself. Aaron Arrington made a little bit of noise too. Uh, he didn't have tre- tremendous stats this week, but um, I felt like he was um, you know, a name that was shutting down shutting down people. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he, well. he, he had a, he had himself in a really game. good game over there against uh, yeah. Houston. Um, and he actually mm-hmm. saved a touchdown with his interception. I do remember that he he got an interception in the end zone um, yeah. that went, that came out for a touchback. Um, so he, oh, yeah. he came up he came up clutch on that interception of mm-hmm. uh, of Kentez Johnson over there. So yeah, yeah. we we got some. That was an easy game. Man. It was it actually <laughs> was a really good game. Um, the Houston's Houston over there. I I love you guys, um, but I, I as part of the podcast, I gotta stay unbiased. So yeah, I gotta yeah. critique you guys. The offense mm-hmm. they could move for the most part. It's just when they got mm-hmm. into that red zone or got close to the red zone, they just I don't yeah, know what it was left. about the New Orleans defense, but it just mm-hmm. like they ramped it up to fifty. Not you could, like <laughs> you got teams that go to twelve, but like right. they're like they're like nah, you, they're like Gandalf. They're like you <laughs> shall not pass. Right this this line here, you're done. All right. <laughs> nope, <laughs> no soup for you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was crazy, man. The gold looked really good, man. I, oh yeah, he had a I great, like, he had himself a really good game there. Yeah, um, he hasn't lost a stride yet, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of him as well. Yeah, he stuff. he struggled early last season, but he definitely hit his stride towards the mid mid mm-hmm. to late season over there, um, yeah. over there in New Orleans. 
And so yeah. he had himself a, a solid game there. He had a 91% completion rent percentage. I'm telling he, you. He completed <laughs> 31 of 34. I'm like, that. you, you want, <laughs> you want, you want to, uh, let's see. You want a comparison? Drew Brees. Yeah. That yeah. is how accurate that was. Um, very efficient, you know. Very efficient. I mean, yeah. he had ninety one percent and eight in over eight yards an attempt. I love the way their offense operates, man. It's just so it's so smooth. It feels like it's not over complicated. It feels like the majority of the routes that they run, you know, are just open. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's just something smooth about that playbook, man, and and the run game as well. I was I thought they were gonna have a little bit of an issue with uh Who's the halfback they had last year? Um, uh, they had Don Fonkers last season. Yeah, I thought it was going to be an issue with uh with him and that that heavy formation, but man, they got behind us. Uh, Jack Logan, yep, Logan, 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 Jack. Yeah, yeah, man. I I was I was like, wow, like this is this is looking just as good, you know, if not better <laughs> than I mean, last year for you know? sure. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, so, so for Logan, I mean, yeah, he he had. He had a rough yards per carry, but he still racked up the yardage um, at 74 mm. yards on 23 carries. Um, yeah. But like we said, he he was up there with those receptions, which New Orleans seems to be a team that really does well with those swing passes. Like they call them at the right times to where right. Logan Jack on receptions, he actually averaged over 14 yards of reception as a running back. Wow. So six catches for 88 yards. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's having yourself a game. Um, yeah. Even, I mean that's that's even a great game usually for a receiver and that's a running back back there he's gonna run yeah. the ball too. Yeah, well that's what we saw out of Dunk Bonkers last year too. Yep. So he's definitely filling some big shoes right now. You know. Yeah, for sure. Um, Dunk yeah. Bonkers was definitely a really good. He's a good receiving back and uh, mm-hmm. he they're gonna miss him a little bit, but I mean I think with Logan Jack they're they're gonna be just fine. Right. Right. So we'll we'll move back on to defense here real quick. Uh, we only got two okay. two more spots here: strong safety, free safety. Okay. Um, tackle wise, this this is another position that I would like to say that that rack up those tackles. And I mean, we got mm-hmm. some guys up here that really show that. We got Nicholas Warner, uh, fourteen tackles. Jacob Gustason, he's he's apparently been making a big deal about the F is silent, so it's Gustason. Uh, another fourteen. <laughs> Another ta- another oh, fourteen Gustafson. tackles. Okay. Yeah, Gustason, Jacob Gustason. Okay. Okay. Or Gustason. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly on that part of it, but uh, okay. then you got Paul Connolly over there in Indianapolis. They all, all of them yeah. got fourteen uh, tackles. Mm-hmm. They're, so they're helping there with their uh, their run defense. The yeah. only thing is, I feel I'd have to give the the top spot to to Jacob Gustafson or Gustafson Gustafson, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and that's because. Although they all had a pass defense, also he was the only one of the three to get an interception. Okay. Okay. So they they all had fourteen tackles, one pass defense. Now, granted, Nicholas Warner did have a tackle for loss, which coming from a safety spot usually is pretty hard to do. Yeah, because um, you're coming, you're, you had to fly about ten yards just to get to the line of scrimmage. Um, Looks like uh, Pablo Zamora had a sack, man. That's that's pretty difficult to do. Uh, yes, for you know, for for a safety. <laughs> oh yeah, for yeah, for definitely, yeah. It's, it's definitely yeah. one of those things where it's like you, if you're gonna do it, you definitely you gotta sell out. Yeah. So that's that's, that's probably one of those plays that give you that cover one high, that high safety defense, and then it's like they bring the one down, and the quarterback's like, oh, I got this. I can throw the outside. The next thing you know, you got a, a, the other safety in your face already. Yep. So and then we'll we'll kind of we'll give a couple shout outs here. We got uh Max Jackson 13 tackles. Ethan Kai racked up some tackles, 11 of them. Yeah. Um over there mm-hmm. in St. Louis. His shout out to him as well on his on his defense. Um I mean, yeah, he allowed 20 play. 29 points, but they've he's been able to show what he can do. Um both him and Johnny mm-hmm. Savage did the defenses uh for the Pro yeah. Bowl. Um, so we can yeah. see what, what we can kind of get a, a taste of what they're going to do. But he also had himself two pass defenses. Mm-hmm. Um, and defenses pretty much keep allow your offense to stay in the game as pretty well. Much. You know? Yeah. So I even mean, though they gave up the 29, it, it, you know, they, they <laughs> held them enough to allow the offense to get in position. Exactly. You know, to, you know, so so you, you just you don't have to make every single play. Just make enough plays. Right. Right. So um, we'll move over here. Um the free safeties another one like like i said the safety position i gotta say is definitely one that's you're gonna get more tackles because you're helping with run support along with over the top for passes um Mm -hmm. 
the two shining stars, it looks like, this week, uh, for tackle-wise at least, were Achilles Frank over there in Queen City and uh, mm-hmm. Blake Chance over there in Carolina. Uh, you got 12 yeah. tackles each for them. Yeah. Um, you got a couple pass defenses. You got a couple interceptions. Uh, we got this, and this is where we got another one, another player who's got himself some more interceptions. Um, and that's uh, Barry Barkley. I mean, that name might sound oh, might yeah. sound familiar yeah. to you. Um, yes, I'm yes. Not, I'm not really <laughs> sure where you might have heard that. <laughs> Somewhere I don't know. <laughs> he, he pulled down three of them and also defect, deflected oh, yeah. two of those passes. Um, yeah, and you got Mark Lopez over in Vancouver. He's gotten two of them. Uh, yeah. Tristan Hatley has got one. A couple other guys got ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony Wyo, Nick Daggs, and Josh yeah. Vasquez. Um, so they're they're like doing V-Tech their jobs over sack. there. Yeah. It's so like a had a sack, I think. Let me see. Is that a, is that another one that got a sack here? Yeah, VTech, I think. Let me see. Uh, yeah, he had a sack. One sack. No, oh, is that a sack? Yeah, oh no, I'm sorry, V Tech. I'm I'm over here uh making up stats now. <laughs> <laughs> oh he had he had himself a tackle uh, for laws at least though. Okay, so yeah. That, that right, might be right. what you saw there. All right, all right, all right. So and yeah, so I mean tackle for losses going from the defense is definitely a good thing. Um yep. you got a couple of guys here that have multiple pass defenses. You got Nathan Blake over there in London, he's got himself full knocks some four passes down. Uh Marty mm-hmm. McCree over in Denver, knocked three of them down. Spurgeon yep. over in Chicago is knocking down two. VTAC's mm-hmm. got two. I mean, we got these safeties. They're they're balling out. They're knocking these passes down, and they're making it they're making it rough on some of these offenses uh, to be able to yeah, complete those passes. It. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Dunhill. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say like I wasn't gonna yeah. bring it up too much, but yeah, we got we got Dunhill having the eight, yeah. uh, Roby having the six. I mean, it's it, yeah. it was a rough week for Simon than others. It was just like. I can't miss. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully so, I have a good week coming up. <laughs> hopefully. So yeah. here's a here's an interesting stat that I just found. Um I'm gonna have to make sure to shout this out to Liam real quick. But Aaron yeah. DeHood over there in uh, Alaska as a kicker has two hundred percent field goal percentage. Oh how was that? He apparently <laughs> kicked kicked his one field goal so good he got credit for two on the website. <laughs> Oh man, it's why seeing doubles. <laughs> so maybe we, it was one of those um uh, one of those tech mobile field goals, man, where, where you know when the, when the game would glitch when you kicked it and it would go like past the end zone or, <laughs> <laughs> through the so, matrix. So. <laughs> so we but we did have this yeah. week where we had everybody that did attempt a field goal it looks like did did actually uh, make their field goals. Um so we got Kramer Jackman, Tarking Shark Tarkington, Matt mm-hmm. Rage. Uh, Aaron Dude and Ashley Finch all attempted at least one and made made one and Aaron Aaron Dehut's uh, <laughs> instance mm-hmm. he made two apparently on one fit one attempt he must have yeah, put a lot of spin yeah. on that ball it spun around the, the goalpost and came back in yeah yeah so um, shout out to uh, Rogerian Sloan man for getting out of the uh, the kickers race as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go he's now a quarterback he was uh, throwing some jabs at me during the game man I was happy to see him at quarterback but. He was an amazing kicker. Yes, he he was. <laughs> he 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 made it, yeah. he definitely made an impact over there in San Fran yeah. when he was over there. Yeah. Um, Shout out to the kickers, man. They don't get enough love. They really don't. I mean, and I mean, all right. So I know we're a sim league. We don't really talk NFL. And Jeff Malinishin, I probably said the name wrong. Is going to probably murder mm-hmm. me for saying bringing this up. But yeah, I still can't pronounce him. <laughs> what up, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> but he's on your team there. It's just like I don't. I, know. You're, I like you're, Jeff you're, Michelin's, uh Jeff. Uh... <laughs> you're, you're, Jeff, you're Jeff Michelin now. <laughs> right. So, but oh, uh, bringing up the NFL, you can either be the hero or you can be the villain, and we saw that this last week in Chicago. Oh man, uh, yes, it was it was, was it was a rough week over there. Um, yeah, uh, what is it, Cody <laughs> Cody Parkey, I believe is the name. Uh-huh. Um, I can't. I think that was the first name, Cody. I can't remember the first. I know the last name's Parky, but yeah. um, missing that forty-three yarder for the game winner, oh, and I know it, man. it. And that's one of those instances. Like no one cares about the kicker up until the point yep. where they miss. Yep. If you're that's if they're true, doing man. their job, no one really worries about you. You start missing those mm-hmm. kicks, and everyone's like, "What's your, what's your problem, dude?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! So and then just looking at yeah. just looking at some some return stats here. We got 
no one no one was able to find pay dirt this week um for for punt returns uh like i said the mexico city aztecs they got themselves a nice defense so they ended up forcing seven punts mm-hmm. there uh jeffrey mm-hmm. dags got seven seven punts returns 39 yards mm-hmm. uh charles ball who has shown that he has the propensity proficiency yeah. Efficiency, I guess. I don't know what to call it specifically. He, <laughs> yeah. He's got that it factor. Capability. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. He's got that it factor to find the end zone somehow on a lot of these, on quite a few of these returns. Um, he uh-huh. did have six attempts at it, got 27 yards. Uh, yeah. A couple of these guys kick kick returns. Uh, we know Carolina up there with how Mexico City's offense went off this week. Um, her. Harish, or sorry, Harish, bleh, mm-hmm. Harish Prasad, eight kick returns, 197 yards. Uh, yeah. Even with that high volume, that still puts him at like third for kick yards per kick return. Um, mm-hmm. uh, back to and Jeffrey, the, back to Jeffrey Dags, the, 81 yards, three cat, three tech catch kick returns. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, shout out to uh, Jaquarius Keyshawn Johnson the third. We're having the longest name. Uh, <laughs> is is not quite list. not quite as difficult as back in the day as Jaquar and Aris Dante Materix, but oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah, back in I want to say it was season ten, my first season when I was in here, uh, we had a cornerback named Jaquar and Aris Dante Materix. Oh my gosh, and it was it was a mouthful. We had a couple games where people just couldn't say it, so they just called him Jadon. Yeah, that's what I would call Jadon. <laughs> <laughs> so. JD. <laughs> so yeah. we're, we're getting close to our time here. So I'm going to do just a real quick, real quick kind of okay. ask what game is it you're looking forward to the most this week? Oh, this week, man. Um, well, aside from my game, so we can restore, uh, <laughs> some, uh, restore some, uh, integrity here. <laughs> um, I would say, man, um, week two, man, what am I looking at? Am I looking at, New Orleans and uh, Atlanta. I like that game. And I think uh, the big one, though. So, all right. So, New Orleans and Atlanta, because I just love watching Xander Gold. I love watching Dunhill. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to see this BDG that uh, that actually brought his, his gameplay brought me to the league uh, when I was watching uh, uh, some of the old footage and everything. And I was all seeing right. some rust out games. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the, other, you know, the other game, which I really want to see, is I want to see that uh, Vancouver Legion. And QCC because I want to see if uh, if Vancouver uh, had a case of the first week for, for first weeks, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and I also want to see if QCC uh, had a case of the first weeks as well because they yes. had a loss. So, um, so yeah, that's gonna that uh, other than the new the New Orleans game and the Atlanta game, I want to see the Vancouver Legion and QCC play. Yep. I and actually I agree with you 100. percent That's the game that I'm looking forward most to is the Vancouver versus Queen City one. Um, yep. I really want to see if Andy Hamilton's able, able to keep it up here. Um, he had a great first week. His defense balled out. His offense balled out. Uh, Queen mm-hmm. City, they're they're more known as a playoff team. So if they make the playoffs, they're a dangerous team. The regular season, they do they do enough. Um, right. But Queen City, they they don't. They're always you can never underestimate them though. Um, mm-hmm. Ash showed them back there, and AJ Caswell backfield the backfield quarterback running back. Uh, you got yeah, Chris Curtis out there on out in the the wide receiver slots. Um, so I mean, they're definitely a team to not just take lightly. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's that's the game. Definitely, I think I'm looking forward to also would be Vancouver versus Queen City. Um, just to see what what Vancouver is able to put up against this, this other team here as well, um, yeah. and see no, see um, see if they're for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh. Another another uh, game from last week. Uh, um. The Tulsa Desperados, man. I kind of want to see uh, Ashley Jackson back in action, man. I, um. You know, she had thrown a a pick and some bad passes, and it was looking kind of dim for Tulsa earlier on, man. And they just exploded out of nowhere, man. Yes. I don't know what happened. To, I don't know if she went to the sideline and cursed somebody out or something, man. But I just saw a totally different playbook, man. And they uh. So that's that's a shout out, shout out to her first of all, you know. Um. Yeah, you know, she she got over and, she got over three hundred yeah. yards passing also too. So that we do have, yeah, we definitely want to yeah. shut that out. Um, yeah, she had herself okay, a long pass, seventy eight yard touchdown. It looks like so. I mean, that's yeah. She had a better QBR than me, but obviously <laughs> I had six picks clearly. <laughs> <laughs> she's like Rob Roby, who? She's like I only yeah, got that one pick. I, what? Who, who's I this Rob Roby guy? <laughs> I gotta watch out, man. Hold on. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, week two, definitely the Vancouver uh, Queen City game. Um, mm hmm. The other game I actually do look forward to also is that Tulsa versus Dallas game because I want to see how the Dallas offense is going to come out and see if they can mm -hmm. their defense and their offense will be able to kind of keep us keep it going there. Um, yeah, yeah. And then a third game here, uh, OKC versus St. Louis. I want to see if St. Louis is for real. Yeah, yeah, um, me too. Putting up, putting up thirty-five, uh, their defense played relatively <laughs> well. I want to yeah. I want to see if they're for real as well. And then. Um, Last season, I believe Ethan Kai took over some of the defense late in the late in the season, and mm -hmm. uh, his off the offense. I believe his now his as well. I think he's doing both playbooks now. Um, yeah, and so yeah. I, I'm I'm really curious to see how this is going to keep going if it's going to keep continuing on or not. Um, so it's it's definitely going to be something to keep an eye on. Okay. So. All right. All right. All well, right. Yeah, I, man. I believe that's going to wrap us up here, folks. Dad, is that an hour? It, it was an hour. <laughs> Look at it, yeah, an hour and actually an hour and one hour and one minute night right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So, all right. All right. Well, Good ladies job, and man. gentlemen, thanks for joining <laughs> us, and uh, look forward to talking to you guys next week. And letting you guys listen to our sultry voices. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> need some so, coffee in here, man. <laughs> oh, I need some coffee for sure. So, all right. Well, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, I'm gonna. This podcast should be out here actually Friday evening. Hopefully before the games tonight, I got a, got a couple hours before that. So, okay. Hopefully you guys will be able to get this beforehand. And if if it does, enjoy the game tonight. Um, we're look, we are looking at New Orleans at Atlanta actually tonight. So yep, we'll get to yep. see the, one of the games that Rob Roby's looking forward to. See what see which of his favorite two other quarterbacks <laughs> comes out on <laughs> yeah. top. So yeah. So that's both of those teams, man. There you go. All right, man. You yeah. guys have a good night and. We will see you back here next week. All right, guys. Stay blessed.